Today we're going to change the rear tire in my uh, 2008 Yamaha V-Star to make the uh, tire easier to get at and the nuts and bolts more accessible. I'm going to start out by um, taking off the saddlebags here and I'm going to take the exhaust off. And I have uh, the exhaust off and the saddlebags off. It probably took all of probably 10 minutes. And what that does is that just makes everything really easy to get to, all the nuts and bolts. I have my exhaust off here and I usually try to lay it on cardboard or a blanket to avoid scratching it. Uh, this is a good time to take some wax and, and uh, give it a good uh, cleaning and I'll wax it. I have my uh, cycle jack here. Uh, if you have the money to go out and buy one, this is probably one of the most handy pieces of equipment I have here. And now I have the bike jacked up so the rear tire is just slightly off the ground. Uh, no use going too high right now. Um, just get it so you got a little tire clearance. I also like to uh, leave my kickstand down when I have the motorcycle on the jack because um, it's too easy to forget to uh, put it down and then let it down off the jack and watch your bike tip over. Okay, now we'll start loosening some bolts. We'll be taking off the uh, two caliper bolts here, right here, and we'll take the caliper off, the brake caliper, and then what I'll do is I'll take some wire and hang that uh, off the frame here so that uh, the, you don't damage your brake hose. You want to keep uh, the, the weight off the hose if you can. We're going to take the four bolts off the differential uh, right here, 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 here and um, we will be sliding this whole assembly out as we take the wheel off. Uh, we're going to want to loosen this axle nut. We're going to want to take the two nuts off the axle end cap here and we're going to want to take um, this bolt out. Uh, what that does is that's the uh, caliper bracket bolt. Um, connects to the axle back here. I have my two caliper bolts out using a 12 millimeter socket. I'm also going to take the bolt out of this uh, brake line hose clamp here uh, to uh, relieve the stress when uh, pulling this caliper back here. And now you can see I have the brake caliper in my hand here. And uh, that's a good time to check your brake pads to see if you need to replace your brake pads. Uh, mine look pretty good. And I've taken a little piece of mechanics wire here and tied my caliper up so it's not dangling and putting stress on my brake hose. But you can use a zip tie or a little piece of string, whatever works. I've taken the bolt out of my brake caliper mounting arm. That was a 14 millimeter socket. I've moved the, removed the four bolts for the rear drive and that was a 14 millimeter socket. And I've loosened the uh, rear axle nut with a 22 millimeter socket. Uh, one thing I'm going to point out is you have your uh, rear drive vent right here and so you want to kind of try to keep that upright so you don't uh, drip um, gear lube all over the place. And now I've removed the axle end cap here. And with the axle end cap off, the rear wheel should be loose. Uh, we are going to pull the rear wheel, including this drive shaft back. So, yeah, let's see here. As you can see, the rear wheel is loose. And so, I guess I'm going to have to probably turn the camera off and see if I can get the wheel off. And I just uh, rolled the rear wheel back and dropped it down. Uh, you can see my drive shaft here has come out very nicely. If we look, we have the uh, brake caliper mounting uh, bracket here. Um, you've got some what look like spacers on it here. Uh, what I'm going to have to do now is uh, jack the uh, motorcycle up a little bit higher to get some clearance to remove it from the rear fender. And here's something that I'm going to do here, just uh, kind of like a little optional thing here. 
I've got some jack stands and I have them resting right on the saddlebag frame there. That's just going to stabilize the bike while it's in the air. You don't want this thing tipping on you. So I put one on each side uh, just for a little extra security. The next thing we're going to do is take the rear drive off and um, we're going to take this axle nut out and then we're just going to wiggle this back and forth, the rear drive, and it should separate from the rim, the tire rim. And here we have the rear drive. By grabbing where my hand is here and right down there in the drain plug and wiggling back and forth, uh, eventually work the rear drive out. Uh, you can see grease right in here, you're going to want to replace that. And you also have a spacer right here. And that's what the wheel looks like with the rear drive removed. So I'm going to set this aside with the vent plug facing up. And now you're going to want to remove your valve stem cap here. And you need a tool called a valve core remover. Uh, this is the one I use right here. But there's all kinds of different models and brands and you let the air out the tire. Uh, when you remove the valve core, this is what a valve core looks like and uh, there's going to be uh, air pressure in the tire. Be sure you hold on to your valve core or that's going to go sailing on you. Uh, best if you use two hands on that. And then you're going to want to remove your wheel weight because uh, that won't be used on the new tire. Your new tire is going to have to be rebalanced. So now you got the air out of the tire you got the weight removed. Now it's time you're going to start to sweat. What I usually do is I take a C-clamp to break the bead, put the C-clamp on one side and put it on the other side and squish the tire together. I don't have a tire changer. Uh, there's other methods too. If you look on YouTube there's some other guys with some good ideas on how to break the bead. Uh, but it is a lot of work. And you can see where I'm starting to compress the bead off the rim. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a little silicone spray and spray it in there. That'll aid in uh, the rubber sliding and hopefully make the job a little easier. I'm very thankful. This one actually came pretty easy. And you can see right here the tire is separated from the rim. To change the tires I use um, two tire spoons and I use uh, a couple tire protectors, rim protectors. What you do is you just snap these onto the rim and it keeps you from uh, scratching your rim up. Get uh, both of these from uh, Dennis Kirk uh, if you're looking for a source. The tire spoons have uh, curves on both ends there and uh, what that does is that help you, helps you um, get in and pry. Uh, you can force the tire spoon and I can't really do this very well one handed but you you can kind of see the concept here where you get in and you pry and uh, you eventually want to go around and pry this bead right off the rim. Now for some strange reason that came off way too easy. You know normally I'm fighting with these things but uh, this one came really good today. You see that uh, the bead here is uh, on the other side of the rim. Now what we have to do is turn it around and uh, start working the other side of the tire off the rim. And turning the tire around we can see we still got this bead seated so we're gonna have to get out our friendly seat clamp again and try to push this side of the bead off the rim. And once again I put the clamp on start compressing the tire. I'll spray a little silicone in there and then keep compressing the tire until the rim or till the bead of the tire pops from the, free from the rim. And using the C-clamp and um, clamping down in a couple spots on the tire, I was able to break the other bead loose. Uh, it wasn't too hard. And uh, now I'm going to want to take my tire spoon and, and hook the edge of the rim here and then pry the tire over the rim. Uh, of course, I want to put my tire protector or my rim protectors on there so I don't scratch the aluminum. After about an hour, it was obvious I was not going to be able to get this tire off. So I had to change plans. What I did is I got a bolt cutter and I sliced 
the bead in two places. And what that did is that took all the pressure off the bead of the tire and I was actually able to pull it out, the rim out by hand. So that's a alternative method you can use. Most new tires that you have uh, will have a directional rotation. Uh, you'll see an arrow here and that's the way they want the tire to rotate. You'll also see a yellow dot and that's where they want the valve stem to be when you inflate the tire. The new tire should be much easier to put on than the old tire was getting off. Um, I'm going to get a dish of soapy water to assist in mounting this uh, new tire. I'm not going to use silicone. Uh, now is a good time to replace your valve stem if you're going to replace your valve stem. And um, we'll start by uh, mounting one side of the bead onto the rim. Okay, I got half the tire mounted on the rim. And what I'm going to simply do then is put some soap along this edge here to make it slippery. Put my tire protectors back on the rim and then mount this other side here. And now you can see I've got the tire mounted. I have the valve stem lined up with the yellow dot. I'm going to start filling it with air without the valve core in. When you fill it with air, you're going to want to seat the bead. You're not going to want to put too much air in. Uh, it, the tire should seat. You don't want to blow the tire up trying to seat the bead. Just how much air it takes is different on each tire and sometimes I have to let the air back out. Start putting air back in. Um, if you've got a little soap around the bead, that'll help let it seat easier too. Then once I've got the bead seated, I'll re reinstall the valve core. And you can inflate the tire then. Uh, install your valve core. Inflate your tire to the proper pressure. Put your cap on. Look around and make sure your bead is seated on the rim. Uh, the next thing, I don't have a balancer here, so I'm going to have to run down to the local cycle shop and get my tire balanced. Then what I'll do is I'll clean the grease out and put new grease in. And we should be ready to reassemble. The other thing that I want to quick mention is while you got your tire off here, now is a good time to clean it and throw a coat of wax on it. Uh, everything is very easily accessible. Slide your rear drive back into position by rocking it and then insert the axle. Okay, through a bunch of wiggling and squirming and letting up and letting down, I got everything lined back up. And I have all the bolts put back in, but I don't have anything tightened yet. So I got the drive shaft started, got the calipers on. And now it's time to uh, tighten up some of these bolts and uh, so get out your torque wrench. We need to Tighten the four rear drive unit bolts. We need to tighten the axle bolt. We need to tighten the axle cap bolts. We need to tighten the caliper bracket bolt. And we need to tighten the caliper, the two caliper bolts right here and here. Now I already have the brake hose clamp bolt tight. And now I have everything torqued. And I'm going to take a second now and uh, get some wax out, clean everything up, and then I'll put the exhaust and the saddlebags back on. Okay, everything's back together. Pipes are on, saddlebags are on. Everything's torqued, everything's tightened. Uh, the one thing that uh, you want to double check is to make sure your wheel is centered the way it should be. And uh, now it's time to take a test drive. And everything went real well on the uh, test drive, so I'll just go through once the uh, exhaust cools off and check and make sure all the nuts and bolts are tight yet, and we'll call her good.